on the topic of reparations. Uh, so, you know, this is this is something that is long overdue for black people in this country. And so I wanted to show there were a few recent studies done uh, referencing, uh, you know, the in, in highlighting the importance and the need for sustained and ongoing reparations in in the United States. And so let's just take a look here at, uh, you know, at one of those uh, articles here. So uh, first up, we have a, this was posted in, uh, this is on theconversation.com. And this was a, there was a study done by two uh, professors. And they, the title of this is Slave Built Infrastructure Still Creates Wealth in U.S., Suggesting Reparation Should Cover Past Harms and Current Value of Slavery. And this was published on February 5th. And this was, uh, again, this was pu published, the study was done by two uh, professors, uh, uh, Joshua F.J. Inwood, Associate Professor of Geography uh, and a Senior Research Associate in the Rock Ethics Institute at Penn State, as well as Anna Livia Brand, Assistant Professor, University of California, Berkeley. And if it helps you, um, you know, these are two white people. So if that, if that, if that helps you, um, you know, see them as more credible than black people talking about this, then, you know, there you have that. All right. Uh, so I just want to read a few quick, um, bits of this. And of course, as always, links to all of our resources and references are in the description box below. So if you need to see it, um, follow up. And I highly recommend you should, everyone should read this full article. We don't have time to read through the full article today, but everyone should absolutely read through this uh, for the details on, on, on this. Uh, but I'll just read a little bit from it. it. says, American cities from Atlanta to New York City still use buildings, roads, ports, and rail lines built by enslaved people. The fact that century-old relics of slavery still support the economy of the United States suggests that reparations for slavery would need to go beyond government payments to the ancestors of enslaved people to account for profit-generating slave-built infrastructure. Debates about compensating Black Americans for slavery began soon after the Civil War in the 1860s with promises of, quote, 40 acres and a mule. A national conversation about reparations has reignited in recent decades. The definition of reparations varies, but most advocates envision it as a two-part reckoning that acknowledges the role slavery played in building the country and directs resources to the communities impacted by sl slavery. They, they're just explaining how they did the study. They say, through our Greek... Sorry. Through our geographic and urban planning scholarship, we document the contemporary infrastructure created by enslaved black workers. Our study of what we call the, quote, landscape of race shows how the globally dominant economy of the United States traces directly back to slavery. All right. And then in this article, they go through, they they, they talk about this, the railroads that still exist, how it's still generating wealth to this day, these railroads that were built on slave labor. Um, so they, they they give multiple exam examples of, of, of uh, you know, companies that that have profited off of these these railroads. For one, one that will ring a bell, bell to, 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 to folks likely that watch this channel is um, one of them was... Uh, uh, Lehman, Durr, and company uh, was, uh, they received, so examining court affidavits in city records located in the Montgomery City Archive, we learned the Montgomery U uh, Ufala Railroad Company received $1.8 million in loans from Lehman, Durr, and company. The main backers of Lehman, Durr, and company went on to found Lehman Brothers Bank, one of Wall Street's largest investment banks, until it collapsed in 2008 in the U.S. financial crisis, where, of course, it wiped out tons of black wealth, okay, and, and black home ownership, all right, when, when Lehman Brothers collapsed, all right? So you can just see how it traces back, all right? Um, I, I just want to read one more uh, uh, excerpt from this, and uh, in, in the, the section they title, Rethinking Reparations, they say, uh, Savannah, Atlanta, and Montgomery all show how Far from being an artifact of history, as some critics of reparations suggest, slavery has a tangible presence in the American economy. And not just in the South. Wall Street in New York City is associated with the trading of stocks. But in the 18th century, enslaved people were bought and sold there. 
Even after New York closed its slave markets, local businesses sold and shipped cotton grown in the slaveholding South. All right. So it just highlights that this is not just a Southern issue. This is a Northern Southern. This is all across the country. All right. And it's not just a ancient history. This is an ongoing, uh, you know, uh, uh, disservice i uh, what that's such a, a a a weak word for it i you know i'm i'm, I'm it's it's an ongoing you know destruction and, and damage that it has caused all right to black communities and black people in this country so yeah i mean uh you know this is this is something that i i talk about when i talk about you know black liberation and and the black freedom struggle in the united states i i always like to start the conversation from the point of reparations because i just think that you you, you can't even talk about equality until we catch everybody up to being on the same you know the same playing field and the same level uh and on a level level playing field so your, your thoughts kwame what, what, are, what are your thoughts um i i mean i absolutely am uh behind it um for it a hundred percent um I, I feel like it's something that I, as a black man on the left, I don't see it come up enough. Um, and especially in leftist spaces, I, 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 I feel like they don't talk about reparations anywhere near enough. And I wonder why they don't see just an easy win. If you, if you really want to win, if you want to bring in more black people, especially uh, people, a large population who aren't involved in politics, that's, that's an easy one right there. You, you say something that will appeal to them and it won't just help them. It'll help the economy, obviously, like it always does any, anytime you give people money, um, it will help the economy, but it, it it's it just seems like an easy win to get more people on your side which is what they need you know they're out here trying to court all kinds of people like the fucking boogaloo boys and all kinds of other terrible people that they want to build with like there are people out there that that deserve to be have a seat at the table and they would want to come out and they'll fight They'll fight for what needs to be done, but you got to give them a reason to fight. And that's an easy one right there that I don't see come up anywhere near enough. And for people on the right, like they always want to talk about, oh, slavery happened. Da, da, da. Why are you still talking about it? Pay us reparations and you, we can end this whole conversation. Then at that point, I'll I'll give some water to when you want to say, oh, why are we still talking about this? But you never made good on it. Like how, yeah. what do you mean? Why are we still talking about it? You, you, you said, sorry, but you never made good on it. Yeah. We still uh, had like Jim Crow redlining. Like it, it went way past that. So for y'all to act like you shouldn't come out of pockets real, real wild to me. Yeah. Really? And I mean, my, my parents were alive through Jim Crow, you know, like it's like it's this isn't some some thing off in the distant past, you know, like there's um, I heard, you know, uh, uh, Sam Cedar and Michael Brooks reference before how like there's a, hol a Jewish holiday called Passover. And, you know, this holiday is still celebrated to this day. And, and, and they talk about it, you know, every year. And and what it is, is to is is is, is in remembrance of the, you know, the the in their people being enslaved thousands of years ago, you know, and, and they, and they still, you know, hold it in, 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 in memory and, and, and commemorate that, you know, annually. And so it, it's absolutely absurd to tell black people to, you know, to forget about slavery that just happened, you know, is literally like within our lifetimes. This is, this is very, this is recent history and not just slavery, but the, the ripple effects of slavery, like Jim Crow and new Jim Crow uh, with mass incarceration, you know, police brutality, we see it, we, you know, uh, so the idea that like, we should just stop complaining is absolutely absurd. You know, look at Germany and what they did after the Holocaust, you know, they, 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 they made reparations, they paid reparations out and they, they atone, you know, they, they did, they took steps to atone for the sins to, 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 to say, listen, we, to publicly say, and to admit we did wrong, right. We wronged these people. And then to make sure that you also, you know, put in things to make sure that that these things don't respawn that that, it, that you know they, it's it's illegal to have nazi memorabilia in germany like it's you know totally fine for people to wave confederate flags around all over this country but you know nazi memorabilia and you can talk about free speech all you want um you know those were traitors to this country and they the people that literally tried to secede from this country and so i i you know i think that there's and those are just symbolic sort of measures that i think that the far more important measures are the economic measures and in 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 paying for in in to recognize from studies like like this that 
It's not just something that happened way in the past. It's still going on to this very day. People are still gaining wealth off of slavery to this very day. All right. And major institutions, institutions like like Harvard. I'm going to actually reference. I'll, I'll pull up and reference, a, 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 you know, a Harvard study that was recently done. But even Harvard, Harvard was built on slave labor. And so, you know, all these institutions, these modern institutions that we have and modern infrastructure that we have and that we rely on to this day and that is still generating wealth in this country was built on slave labor. And, 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 and so in order to actually pay out reparations, you need to you need to account for that, and, to, and, the, and there needs to be ongoing, continued, sustained reparations for slavery to all Black people in this country. Because you can't differentiate, oh, who was a direct descendant of slaves? Or no, sorry, it's all Black people are imp impacted by this in this country. So when you look at it and you see the fact that like they're still trying to clean up banks and uh, different institutions because they're giving. Uh, unfavorable loans to black people or or you look at even the report that came out recently of like the the black people who get their houses under a praise you know like it, it 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 is it's every possible level and place that they can uh hold people back they do so that yeah the, it, it's owed it's it's really owed Absolutely. Absolutely. This is a, the, you know, I just pulled up an article here. There was an article in CNN, on CNN, a uh, recent article that uh, was done by, uh, there was a Harvard study that says that reparations for slavery could have reduced COVID-19 transmission and deaths in the U.S., Harvard study says. Okay, so these are the ongoing lasting impacts, the generational impacts of slavery, all right? And we cannot deny that. We cannot ignore that. And, it, it, and something must be done. And so as Joe Biden talks about his black agenda, you know, if we're not talking about reparations, we're not really talking about healing the any kind of racist past or wounds of you know the, of the United States of America until we're talking about serious sustained reparations in this country. That you know, not this like little baby bonds or like bank loans, zero interest loans. No, 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 because it's not. You, Black people didn't loan their their labor. You know, they gave it up. They gave it up entirely. All right. They were owned by by others. They were property in this country. And the only way to atone for that is by is with, you know, serious and sustained payments to, uh, you know, to black people in this country. And, you and know, I was oh, just going to say it's it's funny that you brought up how they gave um in Nazi Germany, they gave reparations because if I'm not mistaken, they did it here too to uh, <laughs> Japanese people after uh, their internment. If I, I, I right, um, if I'm I'm not, I'm not familiar if 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 they did uh, reparations to the Japanese after internment. Um, very little. Okay, so they did do some. Um, you know, Tammy, uh, Super Producer Tammy says they did do a, a little bit of reparations. I think that an even better point to make on this, you know, is that is that. They did give reparations after slavery. Unfortunately, the reparations were to the slave masters, yeah. not the slaves. Okay, they they paid the slave masters for the slaves that they lost. They lost, you know. Um, so slave masters in this country were paid reparations, but slaves and their descendants have not been paid reparations. Okay, and so they were able. The U.S. government paid out reparations to to to, to uh, slave masters immediately following the Civil War. So we could absolutely uh, pay reparations to the descendants of slaves at this stage. All right, because if, if, if we, we clearly we don't we're not against reparations in this country. It, it's just about who we choose to give reparations to. Clearly, absolutely. Yeah. It, it, uh, that the stock market thing is eye opening. That that's really eye opening. I mean, I guess I didn't. I never thought of it. I guess that of course, but of course, like, and it's just like uh, we, we were traded on on Wall Street, and then we made our own, and then they blew it up. So like, exactly, yeah. Uh, Kwame's referencing about, Tulsa. Right? You know, Tulsa, um, Oklahoma, right? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yep. Um, the Tulsa, you know, massacre where you know they they came in and they just bombed what they call Black Wall Street. So you know, black people tried to make their own sort of, uh, you know, uh, you know, economic, uh, center, and. Yeah. And they, they went and they, they, they blew it up. They literally blew it up. Okay. So, uh, you know, but this is, uh, that was wild to me that, and I did not know that about black people being bought and sold on wall street. I did not know that that was the history of wall street. We're talking about a transaction tax on wall street in order to pay for like things like Medicare for all, um, you know, uh, other, other programs, we should absolutely, absolutely have a small transaction tax on Wall Street transactions for every transaction that's done on Wall Street, a small part of that should go to paying for reparations. And I'm telling you, because of the way that they do 
uh, high, they, they, they have these high volume, uh, 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 they do, they, there's high volume traders that do these, like they're using computers to do, you know, millions of little trades. If you just put some small tax on that, then we could, we could generate, you know, billions and trillions of dollars of, of, of revenue for the U S government. And that revenue should go to, you know, a, a, a massive chunk of that needs to go directly to paying, you know, paying for again, atoning for the sins of slavery in this country and for reparations. So I think that's an extremely important, uh, you know, thing to, to, to be aware of that, that that's how wall street sort of got its start in the United States. That's what wall street was originally for was, for slave trade, all right? The slaves were the prop. We were the property, okay? Black people, we were the property, all right? And so uh, uh, it reminds me of the like James Baldwin quote when he says, you know, that, you know, I am not exaggerating when I say that I picked the cotton and I took it to market, you know? Because it's like, it, people need to hear that, to hear that it's like, it's not some ancient thing, you know? This is, this was us, this was us, all right? Um, this is our ancestors. This was us. I know I am a descendant of slaves. I am 100% confident that I, I know that, you know, I can trace my family history back. We were descendants of Caribbean slaves, you know, same, same, same people, same colonizers. We just, we just, our boats just took a little bit of a, of a, a, a different turn um, as we got over here, but still impacted by U.S. imperialism, um, you know, the, 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 you know, U.S. empire and the slave trade. Uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, so, we definitely, you know, and I, I, I know Kwame's from, you know, got Caribbean roots as well. And, you know, I'm sure you can't trace your roots back, you know, for much further than a few generations ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, all right. All right. So just want to make sure we cover that, you know, Black History Month, we get our 28 days here. Um, so want to just try to highlight that and make folks aware of that sort of thing. Um, and I also saw Kwame also mentioned to me before this started that they're actually doing a Congress is doing a, what was that? They're, they're, they're having like, they're holding hearings right now, yeah, right? HR 40. Uh, okay. On HR similar. 40. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're, they're holding hearings right now um, to try to determine whether or not, you know, uh, you know, what, what, what are the recourse for, you know, on reparations? We'll see what comes out of it. Let me tell you, I don't expect much, if, if anything at all. Um, I expect it to be, you know, tinkering around the edges, not serious uh, reparations. That CNN article, man, that it could have saved lives, you know, possibly that, 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 I mean, when you look at how black people were more impacted by uh, COVID-19, like it, of course it makes sense it, that it, if, if they, if their situation was different, they probably wouldn't be dying like that. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. It just seems so obvious to me that those things are connected, that, th that those things are totally connected. Um, so it's, it's really, it's, it's frustrating that, uh, that they, you know, that, that this is, this conversation even needs to be had still at this point. It's like, it, it seems so obvious to me that, that these impacts still, you know, that, that, that the ripple effects of that are still impacting people to this day in, in many more complex ways than, than are even, you know, measurable to be honest. So there's, uh, there's a ton of other measurable ways that it, that it impacts people. All right. So, all right, let's get to our next story. We're just going to keep cruising through here. Um, um, yeah, and just to clarify, um, the Civil Liberties Act of 1988 granted reparations to Japanese Americans who had been interned by the U.S. government during World War II. All right. Um, in 1988, a payment of $20,000, equivalent to $43,000 in 2019, was compensated to each former internee who was still alive when the act was passed. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, the legislation admitted that the government actions were based on, quote, race prejudice, war hysteria, and a failure of political leadership. Um, the U.S. government eventually dispersed more than $1.6 billion, equivalent to uh, 3.4, 3, about $3.5 trillion um, in 2019 in reparations to 82,000 Japanese Americans who had been interned. So $3.5 trillion for Japanese internment reparations, which, you know, they deserve. They deserve yeah. reparations for that. I'm just saying that black people, people yeah. also deserve reparations and deserve massive amounts of reparations, far more than three and a half trillion dollars. And listen to the numbers that you hear them throwing out. I mean, it's like a trillion or two. Tr I'm trying not to cuss. I'm trying not to cuss, but fuck you. You know how much wealth we have generated in this country? Kiss my ass with your three, tr you know, your, your, your few trillion dollars, all right? I, I, I want to just point out when, like, 
when you even look, and this is what gets me so fucking mad about a pro- cultural appropriation, is it removes the impact that Black people have on the culture here. And when you look at things like Hollywood and 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 a lot of what like our style, our culture, our our, our dialect is, and how much of that is impacted, like when people think of things that are American, a lot of that is Black people shit. All right. So like you need to get it correct in just how much we've impacted this damn country for y'all not to have ever paid us reparations. So yeah. like when we're talking about how much we generate and wealth for this country, let's not forget all the shit that like is a lot harder to to put a fi- a dollar amount to that we've contributed to this damn country. Yep, absolutely. 100 percent.